Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to create a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 40. In this tutorial we are going to bring together those eyepieces to finish up this puzzle and probably start uh, making it so as this wall here slides upwards into the next area. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well. Stay up to date with every tutorial that I upload to my channel on video game development. With that in mind, let's get to work. So we're at a position now where pretty much this whole section is going to be done. And I essentially want to get these eyepieces together in this section here. So we're going to have like something stuck on the wall where we can put in both of those pieces, but only when we've collected both of them. So the easiest and simplest way to do this for now, I mean, you can take much more time doing this, but we're going to create a little kind of a platform on the wall where we can put them in. So let's go to game object, 3D object and cube. And let's bring it into position. It's quite, uh, quite far away. So like I say, essentially what we're going to do is create an area that we can hand both of these in and then this wall will slide upwards. At least that's the plan anyway. So that is roughly where it's going to be. So let's place it about there. And let's have a look at our textures. We've we got anything useful in the way of textures. Let's add this metal, I think. So metal texture onto there. Uh, hold control, press D to duplicate. And let's bring this out a little bit. So it's like the platform for them to sit on. Uh, let's have the size as, let's say, 0.1 maybe. And bring it down and slide it out just a little. So. You can see the platform there is where the eyes will sit. Perfect. So next thing we need to do is create the actual object where the eye will appear. So I'm going to take that cube that we created first, hold control, press D, and I'm going to slim that down to 0 0.02, so it's quite thin. And we'll have it roughly there, probably scale it down a little bit, 0.9 by 0.9. And let's attach that full eye onto there and we should be able to see no problem. So if we zoom out a touch, what I want to happen <clears throat> is the wall that will move is going to be somewhere here and that will move us into the next area. So what we're going to do is create an animation for that wall so as it will move up. And if we just pan around, we can see Everything should be okay because we can see where the eye goes there, but we don't want the eye to actually appear right now. So let's turn the eye off. In fact, we need to bring it down just a little bit so as it sits on. There we go. So it sits on the ledge. And I'm going to rename that as eye object. And I'm going to turn it off. Next thing I'm going to do is create an animation for the real wall, which is this one. Because remember, this is only going to happen when we have the words get out written on this section of the wall. So it's that one that we have to actually create the animation on. So let's make sure we're in our animations folder and let's create the animation. Let's bring this tab down here and call this animation anything we want. So I'm going to call it real rise just because I can, <laughs> because it's a, the real wall that's going to rise upwards. So if we do that and press record and its default position at frame zero is going to be where it is now. I'm really going to be dealing with this on the position. So 10.5 by three, in fact, I will just type zero, then three, just to make sure we double check that. And then 26.5. And what I want to happen is after three seconds, I want it to be somewhere up here. So by frame 180, we have it about there, I think. Uh, let's stop that animation by pressing the record button again. Now we need to go to uh, the animator and we need to right click, create, um, in fact, create state will do and then empty because we don't want it to play. We only want to be able to play it when we say. So. Let's set that as the default. 
So new state is default. The animation we've just created, the wall that rises, will only be played when we tell it to. So that also means that we have to change it down here and untick loop time. So it only plays the once. So again, you can see that this sequence of events should come together fairly well. Uh, let's just make sure we turn the real wall off again. Uh, I just want to press play and just make sure everything does look okay at this point. Yeah, that's fine. No worries there. So how do we do this? Well, best way of doing it is creating an object on here, which says basically when we've picked up those two half eyes, we can actually place the full eye here. And we can pretty much use this left eye pickup script again, except we're going to change it a little bit more. So let's hold control press D on the left eye pickup script. And we'll change this to eye placement. And let's open up that script in Visual Studio and change the class name. So eye placement. And Let's change what the text says to place eye pieces. And at this point, we can then do what we need to to get that wall to raise upwards. So theoretically, we don't actually need to worry too much about this coroutine down here because the sequence of events that's going to happen is when we um, actually uh, place the eye, we need to make it appear and then we need to raise the wall. So rather than have the left eye here, let's have eye pieces. And obviously that will highlight down here, but we can get rid of that in a bit anyway. So when we press the action button, we need to disable the collider. We need to get rid of all that. And instead of starting the coroutine, and having the left eye equals true and get rid of those lines and basically just say eye pieces dot set active true semicolon so next thing to do is to play the animation of the wall so let's get rid of those three variables because we don't need them and let's have public game object real wall semicolon and then after the eyepiece has been set active, real wall dot get component and spiky brackets animator oh, post bracket dot play. And in brackets and quotes, the name of the animation we just created, which was real rise. Obviously, if your animation name is different, you just change that there. Finally, let's get rid of this coroutine down here because we don't need it. And I'm sure I've mentioned many times before the fact that you know, we've not written this script from scratch because we don't necessarily need to. If we've created a script previously that we can modify just slightly, we may as well. It'll save time in the long run. So let's save that script and let's head back into Unity. Now, this is going to um, instantly work. So we're going to need to modify the script a little bit more later on. But basically, we're just kind of testing at this point. So this cube object right here, let's hold control, press D, and we're going to need to rename this as I trig. And I'm going to turn off the mesh renderer and I bring it outwards just a little bit to about there. And that is what we're going to attach the I placement to. So now let's set those variables. If I can find my canvas, so there's the action key. There is the action text. Extra crosshairs. Eye pieces is going to be this eye object. And real wall is this one here. So I'm going to put real wall on and turn the fake wall off. So we're going to simulate the fact that we have, let's say, picked up both of those eyes and we'll be able to place this here. So I'm gonna save the scene and let's test this out. So yeah, imagine that we've picked up both of those halves and let's place that there. Cool, I'm happy with that. And obviously you can add in sound effects if you want to. 
it's entirely up to you. You know, it's probably a good idea to go on something like free sound and get a sound effect, which all sounds like a, a wall moving upwards. You could do something like that. So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to add some code in, which allows us to only place those eyes pieces when we have them. So we need to undo a couple of things that we've done there. So real wall goes off. Uh, eye trig will also go off. In fact, no, do you know what? We'll keep eye trig on because I've got a good idea here. What we'll do is we will modify in this script um, a little section which allows us to check if global inventory left eye and right eye are both true. If they are both true, then we'll run this section here. I think that might be the best way of doing it, to be honest. So let's keep that object active, eye trig, all good. So in void on mouse over, let's add an extra if statement. If, and we'll say global inventory dot left eye equals true and which is the double ampersand global inventory dot right eye equals true then do the following so open curly bracket and then here just before the last curly bracket of that method we need to place the closed curly bracket and that will encompass everything that we would normally have in void on mouse over inside that if statement so if we save that and press play we should be able to head over to that little platform plaque thing whatever you want to call it and we will not be able to do anything with it which is good so even if we pick up this eyepiece yep we got the left eyepiece we still cannot place it there so let's see what happens if we head over and pick up the other eyepiece we should be able to yep so we've got it oh hello there so let's see if this works and it does indeed let us place it there excellent so then this would be the next area that we would go to so i think you guys need to refine this just a little bit more than what i have done obviously i've kind of not rushed it per se but i've taken uh, a lot less time on it than you guys should because realistically you need to work with this a lot better than I do. As I always say, I show you the mechanics, you put those mechanics into practice. So I'm just gonna move this section of floor into place, ready for what would be the next area. So probably about there. So I am probably not going to really create the next area as it were. And that's something that you guys can look into yourself and develop. So I think we are at a point now where we should probably look at saving the game and loading the game. And the most common aspect you'll find of saving and loading is going to be autosave. So I think next tutorial we will start looking at um, autosave. So for example, when we have got past the intro sequence, it'll save for us. When we get into ne this area, this next area, it will again save for us and we'll be able to load from the main menu. So yes, next tutorial is going to be all about saving and loading. So until that next tutorial, guys, you just kind of work with what you've got. Um, everything here, change things a little, you know, work with it a little bit more. Don't rush through like I've done. As I say, these mechanics are going to be vital to creating this survival horror game. And we've learned so much in this series so far that there probably isn't going to be too much more that I can show you. You'll be able to manipulate everything you've learned and create your own fully fledged game. But anyway, until the next tutorial, guys, thank you so much for watching.